All right, boys, welcome back. We got the auto in the camp dog, working great, shifting gears, took out our first victim. But ever since putting the auto in, the water temps now are going through the roof. With the manual, the water temps were sitting between 100 to 105 degrees on the dash. But now that we put the auto in, the temperatures are sitting at a minimum 105, 110 degrees. And if you're going slow in traffic, they're going up as high as 120. We've got the flashing lights coming on the dash. It's not good. If we look at the gauge on the dash, the transmission cooler is actually 60 degrees. The cooler under the side of the car is actually working really good. It has no fan or anything on there. It just uses the air that comes underneath and that actually works really, really good. The engine oil temperatures, they're at 100 degrees as well, 100, 110 degrees. And we think it's running hot now with the auto in there, just it's under a bit more load. So we need to figure something out. So years ago, this had a TDO5 setup on there, high mount manifold, still had the full size radiator. She's very tight. And we didn't have any overheating issues, everything was sweet. It wasn't until we went to this little dog here, the half size Civic radiator, that's when we started having the medium to high temperature issues. We can't put a bigger radiator in there, there's nothing we can do about that. So we've come up with a solution. So I know there's already going to be people saying the half size radiators are sweet. We live in Darwin, it's like 35 degrees at 95% humidity, like pretty much every day. It, it's struggling. If anyone's had their car and it's overheating and you turn the heater on, it's like a second radiator. It pumps out a bit of hot air and you'll see your, your water temps come down. We have this disabled and we don't want any more hot air in the car as it is because we have the air conditioning going. So I'm thinking we can run the heater hoses off the back of that and run these under the car somewhere, maybe here, for a bit more cooling effect. Run it right down the back here, and this is the best bit. This is a radiator out of a Yamaha 660 Rhino. We, we wanna figure out where we can put this. Yeah, just there on the wheel well. That's sick. Behind the rear bar would actually be pretty cool, and then it can use the diffuser here to pull the air out. I don't reckon there's enough space. What if we do a side dump and take your muffler off? <laughs> <laughs> I remember we did that years ago and it was so loud. It was loud, yeah. The aluminium pipes under the car, just the wind brushing past that should help improve it a little bit. The cooler, oh, something's already smashed it. That actually works really well. We don't see transmission temperatures any higher than 60 degrees all the time, that's it. But even when we go and mount this somewhere and we fix the water temperature, what if it's the oil temperature that's making it go through the roof? We're then going to have to put an oil cooler somewhere. Yeah, I think we'll worry about that when the time comes, but... I just think having a radio... Oh... It's up to you. <laughs> it's up to you. Oh, it's, meant, it's meant to be. It's up to you, Bunch, how we do this. Imagine that, a little right angle neck on there, and then the radiator cups on the front here. Oh yeah, we can tech screw that straight to the bottom of the intercooler. I don't know, mate. Oh, the only crap thing with that, man, is you're gonna get heat soak on the intercooler, and then we're probably gonna have hot air temps. Let's just put it in the back like we're going to. Drain the oil out at the moment. Now take the sump off and uh, re remove the oil pressure relief valve. We've got a little trial we want to test with this little thing that we've machined up. I'm going to slide it into the pressure relief valve, thread it back on, put the sump back on, and it hopefully will bring up the oil pressure a bit because we do have an issue with these not having a whole lot of oil pressure. Like, what's this sitting on now if you're just cruising on the on the highway? 20 psi. Yeah, not ideal. So yeah, hopefully it'll bump it up a bit. Don't try it. We're not sure if it's going to work, but we'll see. Oh. She was tight. Okay. Go. Yep, slowly.
So on these four and five E's, they are notorious for doing rod bearing number three on build engines. Nick and I figured out over the years that if you go to a larger frame size turbo, i.e. not a CT9 or a TDO4. We've noticed if you, yeah, if you go to a larger frame turbo, especially with a bigger rear housing, a lot less chance of you doing rod bearings. So we figured while the sump's off, we'll check this. So we built this motor last year and I'd say we've done couldn't even tell you, 10,000 Ks, 5,000, something like that. Yep. A um, few race events, 20, 30 pounds of boost, and... Over 400 horsepower. Perfect. All right, we've flown ahead a little bit with progress. We have the heater hoses on. We have them P-clipped to the floor on some aluminium tube that runs down the back here. Goes to more rubber hose, wraps around the diff, a couple of zip ties. And then we have our radiator. And then we have the radiator that gets tech screwed to the floor like this. And we've had to weld in these little 16 mil outlets so we can put the hoses on like that. We are gonna put spaces on this probably a later date, but we're just gonna put it on now. This was meant to be like an afternoon job and it's been three days. Last thing now, this is usually the factory um, inlet and outlet. So I've made up these little bungs here. Weld those on and we're ready to fit her up and put water in it. You on my mind a lot. Don't need no time watch. I don't know how I got you in my pocket spot. Yeah, this bay, miss you every day. You like my oxygen. Make it seem like the barge in them. Got my heart, no barge in them. All right, we're filling the water up now. Uh, we're probably gonna need two of these because I'd say it's probably double the capacity now. So we'll have to wait and see. We're only just gonna use water. We've always used water, so we'll keep using water. I can see it filling up because as soon as it gets to the top hose, it just sucks up. a big difference. Not touch the side tanks. Yeah, I can't touch that. But I can hold my hand on that. Alright, let's go for a drive. Eighty-eight degrees. We'll see what it gets to. We're still a raw race. Went to 97 and we're already climbing down 95, 94. How's the wheel spin on it? That's ridiculous. <laughs> so explain that water temperature, what it usually does. It'll go skyrocket to 110 and it won't come back down. It'll just stay there. 93. Well, that looks like a big win. happy with that. So during our fun with the radiator I noticed this plug had some uh, loose wires and when I pulled it off the plugs actually melted. So this is the oil pressure and temperature sensor and it's down next to the exhaust. So what we're going to do is we're just going to strip it back, put a new plug on it and cover it with some heat sleeving basically. And that might make it a bit better. And then we can finally check what the oil pressure is meant to be. Yeah. I did check it this morning when I drove the car outside and we had like a hundred psi at idle and when we would blip the throttle, it would go well over 150 PSI. That is a cold, cold check though. Yeah. So we want, to, we want to see what this is at when we're actually hot running temperature. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll fix this plug up and we'll be good to go.
Cam Dogs Oil Pressure Restrictor.